Hey, this is Dennis Porter, author of the Material Manager plugin that comes bundled with Quixel's Dedo. Today I'll be covering version 3.0 of the plugin. I'm excited to release this update now that the legacy edition of Dedo is free for everyone, so let's go ahead and get started. This video will cover all the features of the plugin to accommodate any new users. I'll list all the major chapters in this video in the description as well. If you have a copy of DDo, then this plugin can be found in the swatches folder along with the swatches.fbx file. It's usually found under program data, quixel, DDo, swatches. Uh, you should have four files in there, two different versions, and two readmes for each version. If you have Maya 2012 or 2011, then use this one. If you have Maya 2013, 2014, or 2015, then use the more recent version. Keep in mind that the version that comes bundled with Dedo might be slightly out of date. Once you have the plugin running, you can go to the Help menu and Version Information and follow this link here to check for updates. Once you have all the files in the appropriate locations, you're going to want to come down to the mail command line here and type the following. Source space ddo capital material capital manager underscore and then whichever year you chose 2013 or 2012 in this case I'm using Maya 2015 so I'll use the 2013 or newer version so 2013 dot mail semicolon space and then material capital manager semicolon and then hit enter once the window comes up, I would recommend going to the Tools menu and creating a Shelf button. This will automatically add all of the, um, the information to boot this up every time so you don't have to type it in the Material Editor every time. Alright, so now that we have the plugin running, let's go ahead and go over the new layout. Within the plugin window, we have a menu for general tools, sorting methods, scene cleanup, and some information on how to use the tool itself. Just below that we have an import and export button and the remainder of the plugin is split between two major tabs, the material list and the presets. I'll go over the presets tab first since it's the most straightforward. This scroll list here contains all the presets that you would also find in the swatches.fbx file. This way you still get the freedom to pick and assign your presets without actually having every single preset loaded into your scene file. As you can see here, there's nothing actually loaded in yet. I'll go over creating and assigning presets in a bit. Uh, down at the bottom, we have the contact update. You just click on one of these buttons, it'll take you to the website, and you can check for updates and whatnot. Next is the materialist tab. You'll be spending the majority of your time in this tab while you work with the plugin. So starting from top to bottom, we have a uh, a search bar so I can type in any anything and it'll filter out any material in the scene so if I want to look for rough materials I can simply type in rough hit enter and it filters all of the rough materials that exist in my scene if I want to reset my search I just hit the X here and I can search again and I can also do partial searches so a single character for instance and that'll give me everything with a B in it the main listing is where you can see all of the materials that exist in your scene. Note that this list is different from the presets. These don't actually exist yet. They only come into existence when you click on one of the nameplates. So if I want to add a custom one, for example, I can just click on the nameplate. When I go back to my list, you'll see that it's been added to the list. You'll also notice that there is a yellow indicator uh, adjacent to this material. The main listing here will display with an indicator any materials assigned to your selection. In this case, since I have a material selected, it's indicating which material I have selected with the indicator. If I select this cylinder, for example, that has multiple materials assigned to it, you can see in the material list here that it marks every material that's assigned to this object. This makes it really easy to see which materials are actually applied to a model. Now if I wanted to see exactly where these materials are being assigned to or onto a model, I could simply click the nameplate of that material. You'll notice it becomes singled out. 
and I can choose match. It's going to match any surfaces on in your entire scene that have the rock, rough, or whichever material assigned to it. I can also perform this action on multiple materials at the same time. And to do that, I simply just hold shift and you'll see a little arrow marker appear next to that material. So I'm going to continue to hold shift and just select a couple of more materials. In this case, I'm going to select ones I know that are on my, my model. And with these three selected, I'm going to now choose match again. And you can see that the appropriate polygons are selected that have those materials assigned. These markers will persist until you deselect them, so I can continue adding them. I can reset the window and they will stay there. Uh, to deselect or reset your, your markers, you just hold control and click any of the materials and that'll delete them all. As with matching, you can select multiple materials and you can choose any of the other three buttons and it will have an effect on everything that's marked. So what Refresh does is if it has a texture file assigned to it, it will attempt to reload that file. Rename will go through and prompt you to rename each of the selected materials and delete, of course, will delete those materials from the scene. As you can see here, when I deleted those materials, it replaced the no longer existing material with a Lambert. That way you don't get any invisible faces or polygons that have no materials assigned to them. One final function of the markers is to function as a sorting method. So I can choose a number of materials that I would like to stay on top of my material list. And I can go up to sorting, marking arrows first, and these will always be on top. Uh, it doesn't matter what I add to the scene, I can add this many more materials, but they will never get pushed off the top. So I'm going to go ahead and use the cleanup tool to clear all of my materials out of the scene and start over. Get a little prompt here. And you can see that all of my presets have been deleted and returned to the main preset listing. From here we'll move on to the quick materials and channel control. Under the quick materials section there are some shortcuts to common materials such as Blin, Fong, and Lambert as well as the Assign New Material option here. This is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is select your object and choose a material. So I'll choose a Fong. It'll immediately prompt you to name your material to help you stay organized. So in this case, I'm just going to call it Test Fong. If I select my object, you can see the indicator is showing that this material is assigned to the object. Next, under channel control, we have buttons to add and remove many of the common texture file types associated with game art. So here we have diffuse, normal, spec, uh, emissive, and transparency. These buttons will automate many of the steps involved with actually getting to assigning your file texture, such as coming over here and clicking the checker and then choosing file and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring in a small asset and use all the features of this plugin to quickly assign file textures and things to it. All right, so I'm going to choose import here. I'm going to just grab my FBX and I'm going to select the object, go to my presets tab. I'm going to find an appropriate preset. And in this case, I'm, it's a rock, so I'm going to choose rock rough. I'm going to click the A and that's automatically going to assign it to my selection. I'll go back to the material list tab and click the D down here and that'll automatically bypass all the manual steps and immediately bring up the file picker. I'll just grab that. And I can do this for each of the channels in just a few seconds. And there we go. Um, when I imported the file, it left over this extra Lambert, so I'm just going to grab that, hit delete, and it's gone. So in just a matter of 20 seconds or so, I've been able to import an asset into the scene and have it fully textured and ready to be worked with. So if we take a look at how this uh, material has actually been organized, if I just select this material, click on Inputs, it's going to automatically bring up the Hypershade for me. Uh, we can see in the textures 
section here that um, everything has been named appropriately. So I know that this is my diffuse map, this is my normal, this is my spec. Uh, same with the utilities. This is my place 2D texture for the diffuse, normal, spec, and then here's my tangent uh, bump node and it's automatically set to tangent space normal so I don't have to do any of that manually. So say for whatever reason I wanted to get rid of one of these channels all I have to do is select the material and then choose the trash can icon underneath whichever channel I want to get rid of. So in this case I'll say I want to get rid of the normal map just hit that and uh, all of the utility files and other connected nodes are automatically deleted from my scene so there's no leftover there's no leftover trash. So if for instance I had a file on every single one of these channels I'm just gonna assign them here real quick. Here we go. So if I wanted to get rid of this material if I deleted this the old-fashioned way it would leave all these nodes behind. However if I came over here and I just hit delete it deletes all those utility nodes, texture files, and everything so nothing's left over. Finally, I'm going to demonstrate assigning the material presets to a model to prepare for baking out an RGB color map. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go over to my presets tab and I'm going to pick some material presets that I think I'll need for this, this asset. So I'll need some rough fabric for the fuses, some leather for the strap, um, a few different types of metal, and probably some wood. There we go. I can go back to my material list and now I can start choosing surfaces to apply my materials. So I'm going to choose all these surfaces that I think gunmetal is going to go to. So I'm going to grab all these real quick. So, I'm just going to hit the A on Metal Gun, and I'll grab all the fuses now. That's all of them, so I'll hit the A here. And I'll grab this leather strap next. Sign a leather. This buckle will be steel along with the hinges here and these brackets. And then for the iron, I'm just going to grab this whole thing, assign an iron, and then I'm going to go back and grab all of these parts. That should be wood. Like so. And just assign it a raw wood. Then I'll grab these panels here and assign a wood. Let's see, we missed a spot here. Steel. And just like that, we are pretty much ready to go to bake out a RGB color map. So that covers just about everything that this plugin has to offer. Please let me know if you have any comments or troubles with this tool, and thanks a lot for watching.